Hey guys, Steve here. Some of you may know me as being the creator of the Facebook page and website called Spirit Science and Metaphysics. And some of you may know me as being an admin and author on the Spirit Science Facebook page and website. If you've been following me on social media recently, you'll know that I've completely renounced the New Age. I'm no longer writing New Age articles, and I'm actually a born-again Christian now. So I just want to share with you, you know, my story, my testimony, basically what happened. So I was actually born and raised in a Christian household. I grew up going to church pretty regularly, but I never considered myself to be a Christian. It was just something that I was exposed to and familiar with, but it was never something that was an active reality in my life. My journey down the rabbit hole really started when I was in high school, when I first saw an episode of Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a television show that presents all the evidence that ancient man was visited in the past by extraterrestrials who they thought were, you know, gods descending down from the sky. So this completely blew my mind and called into question, you know, the biblical worldview that I had been raised with. So I started to research aliens obsessively, and I bought the first three seasons of Ancient Aliens and watched them through, like, front to back, over and over and over again. I also started researching things like channeling, astral projection, hidden knowledge, spiritual science, uh, mysticism, and all this stuff. And what started off as study turned into practice, and I started practicing things like tarot card reading, uh, meditation, lucid dreaming, uh, astral projection... And during this time, I was also in school studying to be a philosophy major. And so when you're having, you know, out-of-body experiences and in school studying philosophy, the idea of Christianity just seems naive and childish. And I used to look down on Christians as being, you know, thoughtless and intellectually inferior, I guess. But the problem was, in my studies, I would see near-death experiences, people giving testimonies of having seen Jesus in heaven, in the afterlife, or having seen hell, and then Jesus pulled them up out of hell. And whenever they would tell their story, they would be in tears, they'd be crying, and I would cry. I would be moved from their testimony. So I was, you know, really into the New Age, and I'm really into philosophy, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, there's something unique and different and special and pure and holy about Jesus. And I couldn't put my finger on it, and I couldn't reconcile it with what I was researching and experiencing in the New Age. So I just basically kind of put it on the back shelf, but I always knew there was something different to the person of Jesus. And then after about four to five years of research, I started a Facebook page in November of 2012 called Spirit Science and Metaphysics. It blew up pretty quick. I started to connect with other admins from other Facebook pages. We would share each other's stuff. Before long, you're up at, you know, 250,000 likes. And around this time, Jordan from the Spirit Science YouTube series reached out to me, said that he liked my research and my page and that he wanted to connect. So we, you know, had a work partnership for a while. And we also had a friendship. He was, you know, one of my best friends online. And in January of 2014, I launched my website, spiritscienceandmetaphysics.com, which some of you may be familiar with. And because of all of the Facebook pages I had connections to, uh, my website was a huge success. I was getting about 150,000 to 250,000 website views a day. And I had articles that were, you know, just going viral. So I was basically making a killing for myself off of ad revenue. And so, being 22 years old, I went out and bought myself a sports car. And, you know, greed and materialism had a really big hold on my life. I was obsessed with making money. To be honest, I thought that this was God rewarding me for serving humanity. I felt like, by teaching New Age doctrine, I was actually helping humanity awaken and, and raise its consciousness. And so I was writing articles for my own site, and for a while I was also writing articles for the Spirit Science website, which some of you may know me from. And during this whole time, too, I was still trying to figure out God, trying to understand Jesus, trying to understand, you know, where Jesus fit into the puzzle and where God fit into the puzzle. And I used to believe that God was basically the energy of the universe. I used to think that to have a relationship with God meant to have a relationship with your inner self. And that all you had to do to have a personal relationship with God is to just meditate and tap into that inner stillness, that inner silence, because God as I thought of him, was the I am presence, the core identity of all things. And so sin played no role in separating us from God. And I was actually watching, you know, hundreds of hours worth of debates between Christian philosophers and atheists because I wanted to know the best philosophical argument for the existence of God. But I thought of God as being an impersonal force in the universe, kind of like the Hindus do. 
And this is the way I understood God. And I understood Jesus in this way, too, as being someone who was self-realized, who realized his unity with the divine and that he was calling us to do the same. So I thought Jesus was, you know, someone who ascended to his own inner God nature. And in the summer of 2015, I decided to buy my first house. And uh, here's a picture of it here. And this isn't to brag about my former life or something. That's not what this is about. Um, to be honest, I'm ashamed of my former life. This is more so just to share how much greed and materialism and the pursuit of money had a hold on me. And so on the outside, I was living the dream. I had the house I wanted, the car I wanted, all the money I wanted. I had a, a successful website online. I was working from home, all of these things. But I felt unfulfilled inside, and I couldn't understand how I had all this spiritual experience and all this, you know, spiritual knowledge, but on the inside, I was still um, unfulfilled. And there reached a point where I had to face all of my traumas and all of the skeletons in my closet at the exact same time. Just things started blowing up in my face. And having always known there was something a little bit different about Jesus, I started to warm up to him as, as an idea. Um, I, I didn't become a Christian. It wasn't anything like that. But I just started to explore more open-mindedly the things pertaining to Jesus. And so I began to read the Gospels a little bit. And during this time, I was still writing New Age articles. I was still making lots of money. And I still felt lost inside. And there reached a point where I felt that I had to just be broken before him. Um, so one night, I went outside onto my back balcony of my stupid house. And I just basically fell on my face before him and was weeping like a baby, uh, basically reaching out to him. And when I did this, I felt the atmosphere around me start to change. And I could feel in the air that there was something holy and pure around me. And um, it was also personal. And... I knew in that moment that I was in the presence of of Jesus and the quality of everything around me changed. Um, the wind felt like it was infused with his presence and when it hit me, it would hit me. Um, It just completely broke me, um, and I felt like he was showing me himself and showing me who he is and where he stands in relation to to me and, and to life, and um, I was just getting so many downloads about, oh my gosh, this is so simple, Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the Son of God, it's not some complex, mystical thing. And when I was in his presence, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. And um, this might sound weird, but what stuck out for me, what I, what I really needed to, to see and to feel was um, how, okay, how it sounded like um, the crickets and... Uh, the leaves on the trees and the sounds that were outside in nature, they were all, um, pointing towards him. They were all glorifying him. And I was witnessing it. And, uh, and after that experience, I uh, I went back inside and I started to think about all of the the New Age stuff I'd been involved with, and um, I was just having light bulbs go off in my head, like, oh my gosh, that's what that is. That's a deception. That's a lie. And uh, I never wrote another New Age article um, from that day forward. Uh, in fact. Drinking stopped, smoking stopped, pornography stopped, sex stopped, and addictions were just falling off, like, immediately, right after one experience. And for the first time in my life, I had a conviction to live righteously and to live a holy life before God. 
And when I was in the New Age, you know, the topic of sin doesn't even come up. It, people don't have a concept of, of sin. And I had a conviction of sin immediately after that experience. Um, a day or two later, I phoned Jordan, and I was like, man, I can't write for your website anymore. Um, I basically just cut all of my work ties, stopped writing New Age occult articles, and I, I deleted all of the ones on my site that were affiliated with the New Age I threw all the idols out of my house, I burnt all of my occult and new age books, and I started to do a lot of heavy research into topics that I previously thought were safe, like astral projection, channeling, aliens, and I started to see them through this new spiritual lens that I had. I felt like something had been awakened within me, and I was like looking at all this stuff and being like, wow, this is a bunch of crap. And because I wasn't writing any new age articles anymore, um, my income got cut by 97%, so I had to sell my house, I had to sell my car, and I was glad to. And about a week after I had this experience, I was laying in bed trying to go to sleep one night, and I could feel in like the background of my spirit, uh, I had never felt that dimension to my being ever, even in meditation. I could feel that there was a personal presence there where there once used to be nothing, it used to just be a void. And now I could feel this thing inside of me that I had never felt before and it was prompting me to read the Bible. It was uh, turning me away from sin. It was encouraging me to live righteously. And I could feel it and it was personal and objective and it was inside of my spirit. And I, I later found out through you know reading the scriptures that this is called the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and that it bears witness with our spirit and testifies to us the truth about Jesus Christ and so forth. And this for me was the icing on the cake. I mean, I, I had felt Jesus like a week before this, and now I was feeling him 24-7 inside of my spirit. And I remember feeling the Holy Spirit in me, trying to fall asleep and thinking to myself, like, wow, most people don't even know this is possible, that there is a, a spiritual way that we can know firsthand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this this presence that was in me, it authenticated and verified to me the truth about Jesus just by its very nature. And so for the last few months, I've been getting my feet under me and, and studying scripture. And I got baptized about three weeks ago. And I actually have a new website too. It's called exposingthenewage.com. There's a link to it in the description down below. And on that website and on this YouTube channel, we're going to be going through um, basically every single New Age deception that's out there. There's a lot of disinformation out there that's not only false, but also dangerous and demonic. So we're going to take a look at that stuff here. And on this channel, we're also going to do things like look at the evidence for the divinity of Jesus, um, the historical evidence for the resurrection, answer questions like who wrote the Bible, um, what reasons do we have to think heaven or hell exists, and stuff like this. And so stay tuned for that. And I just want to leave you guys with uh, one last thing. And I want you guys to know that God is not an energy blob. God is not some kind of impersonal force. God is not prana or, you know, some kind of void. God is a personal being who loves you and sees you and has a purpose for you and has a will for you. And it's his promise to you that if you seek him diligently and sincerely, that he will reveal himself to you. And so thanks for watching. I hope you guys stay open-minded and stick around. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.